Hi everybody, Emery and I are out here just enjoying the day and giving a little, all of our little exercise and tune up. Um, been so busy the last two weeks, haven't got to work him hardly at all. And he's, you know, we got to keep this boy in shape and keep him growing. So we're checking on the sheep out here. <laughs> They're yeah. all doing good. And we got a big announcement, big news for Oliver. He is going to be making his first public appearance. <laughs> so if you are a fan and you want to see him, I have entered him in the St. Patty's Day Parade in Rolla, Missouri. Rolla, Missouri is the home of an engineering college and St. Patrick is the, the patron saint of engineers, so it's a huge deal for that community. I don't really participate in it too much other than I think he is ready for a parade. He's getting that well trained and I'm starting to trust him. But <laughs> to put him in a parade, that's gonna make a lot of content to get ready for a parade because he's been around a little traffic, but he hasn't been through a town yet. He's been around some noise, but he hasn't been exposed to everything a parade will expose him to. So I'm gonna have to work extra hard for the next month and really complete his training. And mm -hmm. Put like a, a finishing course. Like right now, I would put him at like a middle school level or a you know sixth grade level, and I wanna get him to a high school level by next month. So um, he has never showed me any indication that he wouldn't be safe to go to a parade yet or else I wouldn't be considering it. But between now and then, I am going to take him to a couple smaller towns and just drive him around the town squares and stuff and get him used to that and have, uh, you know, some other, other learning experiences for him and we'll get that all on film. So uh, if you want to see Oliver at a parade, you can stay tuned and you can subscribe on YouTube and it'll be on there or you can come to Rolla on St. Patrick's Day. So some of the disciplines we'll have to learn. Oh. He hears my voice, he wants to do something. He has tight turns, so let me show you one of those. Come by. Ah, ah. Come by. Come by. Come by. I knew he was wanting to turn left, so I wanted to... Come by. Wanted to turn him right since he was trying to predict which way I was going to have him go. And the distractions of all these sheep and dogs would be good for him too. But we're gonna have to just do a whole bunch of handling training, standing still training, ex just general exercise. Get up, bud. I'll have to put a lot of miles on him between now and the parade. The other big announcement we're gonna have is on Rhonda. So uh, stay tuned and here in just a second, we got an equally exciting uh, announcement for Rhonda. But first I have something I need to talk to you guys about. Okay, so I have a lot of, I have some tragic news I wanted to share with you guys and kind of appeal for help. Um, a good friend of mine, that I graduate, he was in my graduating class in high school and we were hunting buddies and buddies. And just a little side note, graduating class was 30 people. So it's a very small community out here. He uh, passed away yesterday. So about six years ago, he got, maybe a little longer, that's just my estimate. Uh, he got struck down with diabetes and fought and fought that. And it was a really bad case. He lost uh, his toes first then had his feet amputated, or foot, I should say. Then recently he started having heart attacks, and um, just last week at the homecoming game, ball game, I sat with him in the cafeteria and we visited and started talking about the old days and hunting, and you know, everything was looking bright for his future, but then this weekend he just couldn't wake up. Um, his name was Brian Dunham, and uh, he has two small girls, like first and third grade, probably first and fourth grade. They, uh, you know, just unexpectedly have their father ripped away from him like that is just unbelievable. And uh, my friend Joy Byers, you've seen her on the channel if you're a subscriber. She runs the Dickie's Barbecue in Rolla. We've had a couple episodes start there. Um, she organized a GoFundMe account 
to raise ten thousand dollars for the funeral expenses you know because he did not have life insurance nobody out here in the country hardly can afford that nowadays uh and our our you know smaller tight-knit community will probably cover that no problem but i'm thinking bigger picture as a provider and a father i get to thinking about you know they have car payments they have and with the health insurance if you don't know about the health insurance here in america it's just ridiculous if you have insurance the hospitals and pharma they raise the uh the prices so much tenfold that your co-pays are still thousands of dollars you can't do anything without having medical debt here when you've had that many surgeries and that many you know incidences in the hospital you know that stuff's going to start going on the credit card so i'm not i'm just making assumptions because as blessed as we are in our life me and emory i have thirty thousand dollars in bad debt plus the mortgage plus you know maintenance and issues that come up and i can only imagine that what kind of debt she would have and the amount of sh stress it would relieve if her cars were paid off, if the medical bills were paid off. So disregard this GoFundMe's um, goal of paying for the funeral and let's bless them with uh, some fi financial security. I would rather see $100,000 raised or $200,000 raised, get them out of medical debt, get them out of credit card debt, pay for their cars and try to start a future for those two girls, maybe a college fund or something. So we're gonna put the link to this GoFundMe uh, for Brian and for his family. And um, in this you know, video description, we'll put it on our Facebook page. And what's our Facebook page name? Homestead Horsemanship. Homestead Horsemanship <laughs> at Facebook. Just trying Come to on, JR. <laughs> I knew that, I was trying to involve her in the video. Uh, we had a goal to raise $6,000 when we went to rescue Oliver and we got it in six hours. And this is so much more than, than I mean, I love Oliver, but or any, yeah, you know, horses. if I could forsake all of my horses to give these girls a brighter future, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So, um, I really hope that this video with the, you know, trying to, I tried to put in it with a good topic that would be clickable so that the most people in the world could see this because it's not really about Oliver going to a parade or Rhonda going to what she's going to be going to. Even though that's very exciting. Even though it's very <laughs> exciting news. I, I put I put this GoFundMe video together. I took off work today to put it together to try to appeal to as many people as could see it as possible so that we could bless this family. Um, because out here in this part of the world, it's pretty modest. You know, I'm not saying they're poor. They're very middle class for this area. But middle class for this area, compared to most people watching this, is poor. Like, uh, I just can't even imagine how, like the the inflation, the way it hits us and the community around here and how hard it is. We're very blessed, like I say, my family, we're making more money than we've ever made and I feel guilty to eat lunch out. Like that's mm -hmm. how tight money is around here. So this family is gonna be a hundred times worse off than our family right now because they just lost their father yeah. and the head of their family. Um, it's just, you know, I'm not even worried about Brian anymore because I know he had faith. Uh, he had been bringing his two little girls to the church that me and Emery go to. We've seen him up there and the last, last time I talked to him about that, he said, yeah, I just want them to know. I just, they need to know, they need to, they, that's why I'm bringing them to church, they need to know. And that's just, you know, Brian knew, so I'm not worried about him, but what I want, I just want him to know, looking down at me from where he's at now, that his buddy is trying to look out for for his family because I know if I was leaving I'd be all excited to meet Jesus but I'd be so worried about leaving them behind and being able to provide for them so I want to do this for Brian and I want you guys to help me thanks I just wanted to say thank you for listening to that appeal for help and um, wanted to make a few clarifications my bias as a provider and a father, I think about the need of providing for the little kids. But I do want to just mention real quick that, he, you know, he's leaving behind his wife and his high school sweetheart. Um, his wife was also in our graduating class, and they they were together the entire time that I've known Brian. Even as a child, they were they were a couple. So it's going to be very hard on her. And they had a another child right out of high school who's now an adult so I, I, I don't want to leave her out and 
in the prayers and the thoughts. Um, and I wanted to mention that, but you know, she's self-sufficient and I wasn't thinking about her as far as needing to be provided for, uh, financially, just, you know, keep her in your prayers. And then the last thing I wanted to point out and clarify is make sure that you find the link to the GoFundMe and don't send any of your financial support to any of the support, um, functions of this channel, like our PayPal or to us directly at um, Homestead Horsemanship. It would just get too hard to keep track of. But I thank you for what you can do. And um, if you're not in a place where you can donate to the GoFundMe, then just send up some prayers for them. Now let's go back to the barn and get Rhonda out and we'll tell you her big news. Okay, everybody. For those of you that don't know, this is Rhonda. She is my border collie. <laughs> and she has her own playlist on the channel if you go back and look at Pony Wars. A couple uh, videos. Yeah, a few not videos. <laughs> not, not many, but... Um, she has a pup that I'm trying to train named Sissy and I took him down to the breeder down in Arkansas and his name's Kevin Lippy and we, he was watching me work and he thinks Rhonda is ready to go to a competition. Uh, Kevin is a competition legend. He is sitting in first place in the National Stock Dog Association's professional division right now with the dog that I bred Rhonda to that Sissy's dad. So it's his name Buck. Buck, yeah, yeah. Buck's sitting number one in the open division, the National Cattle Dog Association, or no, National Stock Dog Association. You want to look them up on Facebook. And Kevin so, was pretty interested, or pretty impressed with Sissy too. Yeah, Sissy did great for him. Actually, yeah. I like the way Sissy's working better than Rhonda. I don't think Rhonda's ready for a competition, but Kevin said for me to do it anyway because I would learn more for the experience. For the experience. Yeah and it would make me a better trainer for Sissy. Mm -hmm. So um, I can get a job done with Rhonda. She's just not, she wants to put too much pressure on the stock all the time. I need her to learn to keep a, a wider bubble on them. So I have uh, two sheep caught down here in the arena and I'm gonna work with her as many times a week as I can until the 17th of this month. And that's the stock dog competition in Kabul, Missouri. So. <laughs> That's where we're gonna enter the novice division and it'll be our first experience for both of us. I've never been to a stock dog no, competition mm -hmm, before. Yeah. Never seen one. Yep, it'll and, be cool. Uh, Rhonda's never been either. So let's try to work these sheep a little. Come here, Rhonda. Come by. Easy. Oui. Ah, ah. Rhonda, down. Lay down. Got a little too wild there. Lay down. Come by. Easy. There. We. We. There. We. Down. Down. Lay down. Come by. Down. Lay down. Away. Come by. Down. Lay down. Away. Away. Down. Come by. Down. There. Walk up. Walk up.
that'll do. Come here. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. That was pretty good. Okay, after, after she works, Rhonda's favorite thing to do is go cool off. <laughs> Rhonda. Here. In the creek. Good girl. Okay. So at the stock dog competition, there will be a lot calmer stock. My sheep are wild, okay? So they run and try to get away from the dog. The stock that'll be there will be dog broke. So I'll have a lot more control over them. They'll just walk. They won't be very afraid of the dog unless the dog bites. Um, so Rhonda will work a lot better on those. And that was fresh. I didn't warm Rhonda up. I didn't warm the sheep up. So um, you could see how she kind of gets in too close when I give her a direction sometimes and causes some panic. Um, I'm gonna work on that handle. Um, you can see she's, she's getting pretty responsive with her downing and walking up. So that was a pretty good work, even though there was a lot of chaos and commotion there. But I'm gonna be working on that as consistent as I can every day with her and Sissy both and I'll enter her in the novice division there on, um, it's February 17th in Kabul. So, you know, hit the subscribe button, follow along, and we'll have an episode on that, that dog trial where we summarize all the coolest action. You'll get to see Buck probably win it too. And hopefully you guys can be cheering for me on the novice division for us to get a good placing in that. Oh, so we'll get to see um, Sissy's dad? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. everything will be there. Cool. Okay, just so you know, this is what I plan on using in the parade. I've had this sitting in the barn, uh, meaning to get it out, clean it up, and fix it up, and repair it. Um, there's not too much wrong with it. It needs brakes, needs tires. Uh, I'll paint the shafts, maybe fix a little bit of the broken boards. There's two pieces of broken boards. This, is, this was redone, uh, not the prettiest, with just plywood. Paint it up, and I'm gonna have Mary my oldest daughter, right? Homestead Horsemanship with a YouTube play button right there. Mm -hmm. Me and Emery can sit up front. The, uh, Mary and Becca, or Mary and Isaac can sit in the back, throw out candy. And I'll probably have Becca walking along up front just in case anything goes happen. I fully trust Becca to be able to be my, my helper. She knows what to do without me having to tell her. She's a, you know, pretty accomplished horse trainer for a little kid, so be a safety factor so unfortunately poor Becca will have to walk during most of the parade and probably film I'll, too I was gonna say I'll probably be walking to film too yeah, <laughs> we'll just kind of have to see how it goes yeah I need some but. company in my way Mary was uh crowned the homecoming queen this year oh we'll so, put a picture in here yeah <laughs> so I'm trying to get her to be, uh wear her homecoming gown and her tiara I think that would be good. Have a little princess in the parade too. So. Yeah, she's not yeah. not going. That's for probably it. not going to happen. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs>